Now let's start building out this portfolio. So I'm using a hypothetical portfolio combined of four different assets. So we're looking at the S&P 500 index. So you'd use an ETF uh, that represents this. Then gold, so one, uh, one ounce of gold you could think of or however many ounces. And then Microsoft stock and then a bond index from Vanguard. So this is just an intermediate um, length bond index from Vanguard. So we have stocks, we have commodity and gold, and we have a bond. And then, so this is the part of the whole um, Fish and Frontier modern portfolio theory that ha is based on kind of a bad assumption. So you need expected returns. You can get this from various places on the internet or from various financial services companies that provide these expected returns, right? So I just went with these values. So usually equities like stocks have higher returns. So Microsoft and S&P 500 gave 8.5% and 8%, found that on the internet, and gold 5% and the bond index 4.5%, okay? And then typically the equities also have the higher risk, right? So the higher San Diego standard deviation so gold i gave 16 percent and the bond index uh 14 percent etc so then when we're going to make this portfolio we need to make sure that we've specified a minimum and a maximum weight of each asset in the portfolio so that's what i put here i just said no asset can be below 15 percent minimum weight and no asset can be above 35 percent maximum weight okay Here's where our current weights are for this portfolio. So in order to do this, we need to know how each asset um, correlates with each other asset. So we need to make a covariance matrix. In order to do this, we need the data analysis tool pack. So you'd go to the data ribbon, data analysis, make sure that you have that. So you can go file, options, add-ins, and then Excel add-ins, go, and then just make sure you have both the analysis tool pack selected and the solver tool pack selected. Okay, so once you have both those there, you can do this. So we need the actual return data for each of these assets. So I pulled in the prices of each one. So S&P 500 for each day for the past year. Same with gold, same with Microsoft, same with the bond index. Now you're probably wondering, where did I get that? So I went to Yahoo Finance's website. So here I'm on the Microsoft Corporations page on Yahoo Finance, and then I went to historical data. I just grabbed the time period for the past year, and then hit download, and that takes it, that brings it up in Microsoft Excel, and then I just use the closing price for each of these and lined them up uh, day by day. Now we need to get the actual return. So to do this, we take the value of the um, later date, subtract the value from the previous date, and divide by the value of the previous date. So that gives us the percentage return for each date, okay? So we're gonna get that for all four asset classes. We're gonna go all the way second from the bottom and paste all these. So we have all the returns for every date for every asset class. Okay, so now this is where we make the covariance matrix. So we're gonna go to data analysis and then go to covariance and hit okay. All right, so our input range is going to be um, starting with the names of all these assets, and we're going to go all the way down, grab all of them. Make sure you have labels in the first row selected, okay? And then as for output range, we want to put it right on um, it right in our covariance matrix. So now we're going to do okay. Now I'll move all that over one. So now we have this covariance matrix here. In order for the covariance matrix to work, we need to have this other side populated, right? So if gold is po is correlated with S&P 500 at this amount, then I can just take this value and paste it here, right? And if Microsoft is correlated with S&P 500 at this value, it's the same here, right? So we're just going to go and do that. So gold and Microsoft here, and then the bond index correlates with S&P 500 here. and then Microsoft with the bond index like that, okay? And let me just fix these borders because I do not like how that looks. Um, there we go. Okay, so here we have our covari covariance matrix, right? And now we're going to 
we're going to have to look at the sharp ratio and, and find the standard deviation. So this is a formula that you're probably going to need to just write exactly as how I have it written, right? So the MMULT function multiplies matrices. So we're taking the weights and we're multiplying them with the um, covariance matrix. So now I'm going to hold control shift enter to make this an array formula, right? And so the sharp ratio, and I'll pull, put that up right here on the screen, is basically the return, the expected return of the portfolio minus the risk-free rate, which I had right here, divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio. So your optimal, optimal portfolio is a portfolio that maximizes the sharp ratio. And so what we're going to do here now is we're going to find the expected return so I'm just taking each asset's expected return, multiplying it by the asset's weight, and we're doing that for all four. That gives us the total portfolio expected return. And then we're finding the standard deviation with this formula like I showed you before. And we wanna just sum up all of our weights to make sure that the total weight is 100%, right? So this is going to be um, something that we put into the uh, solver function. So now that we have all of these, then now what we're going to do is try to find the portfolio that maximizes the sharp ratio. So we're going to change the weights to make sure that the sharp ratio value here is maximized. To do this, we go into the solver tool on the data tab. So we go solver and then our objective, so set objective is that we want to take this sharp ratio here and we want to maximize it, okay? So then what are we gonna change? So we're gonna change the weights in order to maximize the sharp ratio. But we have three different constraints, right? So we're gonna go to add. The first constraint is that we need our total weight to equal 100%. So we're gonna say C14 equals one, add. We, our next constraint is that we need all of these weights here to be less than or equal to the max weight so we'll add, oh, whoops. So we need all these weights to be less than or equal to the max weight. And then we'll add that. And then we also need all of these weights here to be greater than or equal to the minimum weights. Add. Okay. So now we have three different constraints to maximize this sharp ratio. We're gonna make sure that the uh, unconstrained variables are non-negative and then we're gonna hit, hit solve. So, okay, so there we have it. So this is our optimal portfolio that holds 35% in the bond index, 33% in S&P 500, 17% in gold, and 15% in Microsoft. And we see that with this optimal portfolio, we have a 44% sharp ratio, an expected return of 6.3%, and a standard deviation of 9.8%. Okay, so, you know, if you guys enjoyed this video, you can uh, please subscribe to the channel. And also, if you want this file, check out the uh, description below. I'll provide a link to a download on my website, PortfolioConstructs.com. So, thank you for watching.